Some algae have adapted to a rather different ecological niche, life upon an animal host. Others live within their host animal, in this case, a flatworm. Living in intimate contact with the flatworm's tissues, the small green cells share food made by photosynthesis with their host. The flatworm avoids dark areas and swims toward the light, giving its guests optimum exposure for photosynthesis. It's a symbiotic relationship in which both species may benefit from their close association. Photosynthesis, the conversion of light energy into chemical energy by living things, is a basic life function. The process is thought to have begun around three billion years ago in life forms which resemble the very simple cells we know today as blue-green algae. Algae of this kind can be found living in habitats rich in organic material, such as untended aquariums. The slimy coat growing on the aquarium wall is made up of strands of very small cells. The cells have no nucleus, and their DNA is distributed throughout the cell. Cells which lack a nucleus are called prokaryotes. The word means pre-nucleus and suggests that such primitive cells are ancestral to nucleated cells. Present-day prokaryotes include bacteria and blue-green algae. The similarities between these two groups of microorganisms are very striking. Here, a filamentous bacterium glides through the strands of the blue-green alga, Oscillatoria. Both life forms thrive in low-oxygen environments, such as stagnant pools, where conditions may duplicate the environment which existed on Earth three billion years ago. The actual mechanism of locomotion in these primitive organisms remains a mystery to biologists. In examining gliding prokaryotes, we may be looking back in time to one of nature's earliest experiments in locomotion. Fossil evidence indicates that prokaryotes were the cell fossil appeared. These cells were larger, resembling present-day protists, single-celled organisms which possess a nucleus. In the biological history of the planet Earth, this was an important event for nucleated cells make up all higher forms of life. A cell having a nucleus is called a eukaryotic cell. The eukaryote-prokaryote distinction forms a basic division of living things. Bacteria and blue-green algae on one side, all other algae, plants, animals and protists on the other. Eukaryotic algae may have played a significant role in evolution. Living today in lakes and ponds are algae which hint at the means whereby single cells gave rise to more complex multicellular organisms. This alga, named Chlamydomonas, possesses a red eye spot, two flagella, and a single horseshoe-shaped chloroplast. Living in the same pond can be found simple aggregations of cells in which the individuals are almost identical to Chlamydomonas. There are species having 16 cells, others with 32, and so on. Volvox, which we saw earlier, is one of the largest colonies in this series. Each cell lining the Volvox sphere is equipped with an eye spot, two flagella, and a single horseshoe-shaped chloroplast. If one of these cells is released from the colony, it can survive independently. However, it cannot divide, as reproduction occurs only within the colony. These bright green cells are undergoing division to form a daughter colony within the parent volvox. As the daughter colony matures, it begins to spin, propelled by flagella projecting from each of its outer cells. Eventually, the parent will rupture and release its daughters one by one.
As a Volvox begins its independent life, a new generation of daughter colonies can be seen forming within. With release of its daughters, the parent Volvox becomes an empty sack which will settle to the bottom of the pond, its reproductive function accomplished. Daughter colonies are produced asexually by cell division. However, Volvox can also reproduce sexually by means of eggs and sperm. This is a female Volvox, and the large cells are eggs. In another Volvox, small clusters of sperm cells are developing. The sperm packets escape and swim about until they come into contact with a female volvox. Responding to chemical signals produced by the female, they will gain entrance, break apart, and one sperm cell will fertilize each egg. The fertilized egg develops a thickened outer coat. Within this protective envelope, it can endure long periods of freezing and drying. When the environment again turns favorable, out will hatch a new volvox colony. The similarities between single-celled algae and the cells which make up colonial forms suggest stages in an evolutionary series. Single cells aggregating by twos and fours. Simple colonies finding survival value in their size. Larger colonies containing cells specialized for different functions. Of course, biologists can only infer ancestral relationships from present-day species. However, it seems likely that the earliest multicellular plants originated from some form of colonial algae. Now we have the algae in historical perspective. The blue-green algae were among the planet's earliest inhabitants, dominating the scene for two-thirds of the Earth's biological history. Then, during the last billion years, Algae-like organisms appear to have been the participants in a series of major biological events, including the evolution of eukaryotic cells, sexual reproduction, and a number of experiments in multicellular organizations.